Hey Yogas, how's it going? It's Tali here from the Yoga Shed Spell with it and we're going to be moving in such a great way today. Mm, this flow is going to be so grounded in forward bends. So it's going to be lots of forward folds. We're going to feel very rooted, very grounded. But at the same time, we're going to be working with the energies of feeling light and energized. So this is something that's pretty much been a theme of mine for this year. How can we feel grounded and stable, but at the same time be able to capture some of the lightness and the energy and the ability that we're all wanting to feel? So hopefully this flow is going to help get you there, or at least give you a little introduction into the way that I work. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to get started in child's pose, so make your way there. And I'm just going to add before... I head down to child's pose, you may want a couple of blocks if you're feeling a little tighter to the backs of your legs, grab a couple of blocks. I see you in child's pose. So setting up in child's pose, making sure that you feel nice and comfortable here. I will say that if any of you have any knee injuries, then child's pose often doesn't feel the best. I've definitely been there. So if you'd be more comfortable lying or seated in any way, then please go for it. Or just keep your hips a little lifted away from your heels if that does feel bad. Otherwise, find your child's pose, your variation. Knees can be wide or together. I find that when our knees are wide, it helps us to melt our heart. And when our knees are together or closer towards each other, then it ends up with our back a little bit more rounded. So See what you need today and make your way there. And arms can be out in front of you or you can relax them down by your sides. Wherever you are, just let your shoulders relax. And take a couple of moments here to come into your breath. So arriving in your practice, I love to take a few moments before any practice just to Come into this moment. So take a moment or two to notice your body. Where you feel stuck or tired. And equally where you feel good. Where you feel relaxed and calm. And observing where you're breathing from. And try and allow your breath to Almost move from your lower back here in child's pose. We're not going to be able to breathe so easily through the front body when we're in a forward fold. This child's pose is a one R. So allow your breath to really move your back body. We want a 360 degree breath. Taking some slower, deeper breaths in and out of the nose. And cultivate your ujjayi breath, if that's what you're working with in this moment. And a slight constriction in the back of your throat. And then wherever you're at, just make sure that your breathing is deep. In and out, through the nose. Just take a slow breath in. Reach your arms out in front if they're not there already. Press down into your hands. Maybe even straighten your arms, feeling your elbows lift off the mat. Take a breath in, get long through your side body. Hips press back, fingertips creep forward. And exhale, melt your chest a little lower towards the air. When you feel grounded and connected to your body a little more, it's come up to kneeling. Facing whichever way you want, top or bottom of the mat. It's going to be facing towards you guys. So if, again, if kneeling doesn't feel too good for you, just stand on your shins rather than sitting your hips to your heels. And place one hand on your heart. And one hand on your lower belly. And close down your eyes or gaze down towards the earth. And just come back 
to your breath. Whenever we move, we tend to mm, lose the connection that we've built to our breath, or to our body, when we change position. So just come back. Mm. And with every breath in, notice how your, your hand on your heart lifts a little relative to the hand on your belly. And every time you breathe out, notice that your heart is almost drawing down towards your belly, so heart towards navel. You're going to really start to exaggerate this, breathe it in, lift your heart space away from your navel. Almost like you're coming to a little bit of a bat bend, lifting the chest. And as you breathe out, letting your heart draw towards your navel, again exaggerating this, almost thinking about rounding through your body, kind of concave out your front body. Three more times like that. Let's take an inhale, lift the chest away from your navel, draw your shoulders back, draw your heart forward as well as up. And exhale again, round. If you're familiar with cat cow breaths, you may notice a similar concept here as you breathe in. We're carrying in this back bend. You know, it might look very different from when we're in tabletop doing cat cow. Every time we breathe out, rounding through the spine, almost like cat pose. It's going to come in really easy when we start to move into forward folds. One more time, breathe in, lift, open, expand, and exhale to round, heart towards navel. And start to bring the spine back up to neutral, stacking the bones of your spine to sit up nice and tall. Let's take an inhale, step your arms to the sky. Almost allow your chest to lift away from your navel here. So a little bit of a back bend for this particular variation. And look up towards your thumbs, open through the heart. And exhaling. Let your hands rest down by your sides. We're going to make our way to a forward fold at the top of your mat. And take your time. I need to take maybe the next two, three, five breaths to get here. And we'll meet in ragdoll. So feet can be hip width. Soft to deep bend to your knees, especially for this first fold. And take hold of the tips of your elbows, like the bow, the funny bones if you like. And just let your forearms rest down towards the man. Have a sway, side to side here, move from the hips, you can nod or shake your head if that feels more comfortable for your neck. So even though we're starting off slow, we're going to be building up into a flow. Release your fingertips down to the earth. Again, we just want to feel grounded for a moment. Inhale, halfway lift, bring your hands to your shins or fingertips to the earth. I want to think lengthening through the back body. Thinking maybe, as we thought about before, we're lifting the chest away from the belly a little bit, chest away from the navel. And as you breathe out, you can bring your hands to your heart and your navel again if that helps. I want to be thinking about folding and we're thinking heart towards your navel. So kind of rounding through the front body to lengthen through the back. Let's take a breath in, slowly come all the way to stand, see if your arms are the sky. Relax your hands down by your sides. Right. So this concept of heart away from navel, heart towards navel, is something we're really going to be focused on in this class. So as we move through our sun citations, we're going to find sun citation C. Now I want you to be thinking, and I'll remind you, <laughs> I want you to be thinking about the heart and navel and where they are relative to each other. Take a slow breath in, standing. Feet can be hip width or big toes can touch, it's your choice. And saddle where you are as you breathe out. And inhale, sweep your arms to the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, fold. And as you start to fold, can you think heart towards navel? 
halfway lift, inhale, heart away from navel, and as you breathe out we're going to step your left foot all the way back and drop your left knee. Take a breath in, sweep your arms to the sky, Anjali Asana. Mm, breathe out, half splits, hands to the earth, and straight on your right leg. This way, maybe where you want to adjust your stance a little bit if you need to bring that right heel further forwards. Let's take an inhale, bring your forehead towards your right big toe, and again, this is an idea where you're not thinking all this truly. And as you breathe out, you relax down, now deeper fold. Now maybe your deeper fold is where you will need your blocks for underneath your hands. Maybe you'll need to walk your hands back. Maybe your deeper fold is higher, maybe it's lower. There's no right or wrong here. All that what feels good in your body. Inhale, get long again. Forehead towards your right big toe. And bend your right knee as you breathe out. Hands come down, framing your right foot. So make your way back to the first downward facing dog class. So press into your palms, press down to your finger pads. How light can you get through your right foot? And you step back to down dog. So you can inhale, roll forward, high plank. And exhale, lower your knees, lower all the way to the mat. Cobra, breathe in. Roll your shoulders back as your heart lifts. And downward facing dog, exhale. So one more time like that on the other side. Take your left leg to the sky, breathe in. And exhale, left knee to your chest, round through your spine. Step your left foot as far forwards as you can, drop your back knee. Sweeping your arms to the sky, inhale. And exhale, half splits. And inhale, forehead towards your left big toe. And exhale, chest towards thigh, heart towards navel. Breathe in, looking towards your left big toe. And exhale, bend your left knee. Tuck right toes, right knee lifts. Take an inhale, step forward, right foot meets your left at the top, halfway lift. And exhale as you fall. All the way up to high mountain, sweep your arms to the sky, inhale. And arms down by your sides. We're going to do that with the breath. So move a little bit faster. We're going to add on a couple of variations of the poses. Let's take a breath in again. Sweep your arms to the sky. Reach up. Exhale, heart towards navel as you fold round through your front body. Halfway lift, inhale, lengthen. Exhale as your right foot steps back this time, right knee low, let's drop your right knee. So inhale, sweep your arms to the sky, on your knee. This time as you breathe out, cactus your arms. A little back bend here, mix up with these four balls we're going to be moving through. Okay, you'll lift your chest forwards, up, heart away from your navel, inhale. And exhale, airplane your arms. So hands down by your sides. Palms are going to face towards the front of your mat. So you don't want to be thinking about spiraling your upper elbows in. You want to be thinking about opening the shoulders. Straighten your left leg. And help that heel forwards if you need. Breathe in, lengthen through the spine. Like no hands half splits. And exhale, forward. Over your left leg. Breathe in, bend your left knee, reach your fingertips to the sky. Hands lower down to free in your left foot as you exhale. Tuck your right toes, right knee lifts, breathe in, prepare, press into your palms, your base back towards your finger pads. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot back. Take an inhale, right knee. And stay for a breath out. Round forwards, high plank, inhale. And full chaturanga again, modify it by lowering your knees if you need. Upward facing dog, if your back body feels ready for it, otherwise cobra, breathe in. 
Exhale, back. Downward facing dog. Inhaling, reach your right leg to the sky this time. Sweep up. Exhale, right knee to your chest. Lift the knee, lift the foot and step forwards. Foot in between your hands as close as you can. Adjust the foot if you need. Breathe in, Andrabayasana. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, airplane in your arms. Straighten your right leg. And house fits and no heads. Exhale, bow with your straight right leg. Inhale, rebend your right knees and sweep high. Exhale, hands lower down. Stepping forwards, left foot to your right. Halfway lift at the top, breathe in. Exhale, fall. All the way up to high mountain, take a breath in. Hands down by your sides. And then pause. If you've done my classes before in real life or on YouTube, you'll know I love the pause. Where we can just close our eyes, come back to ourselves, come back to our breath. Notice what you've lost. If you've lost the connection to your breath while moving, Notice what you've gained. Whether you feel warmer, <laughs> whether you feel more open, stronger, more alive. And can you tether your feet to the earth for your heels rooting down? You feel the calmness through your body as you come back to the breath. Take a slow inhale. Arms down by your sides, and open your eyes as you breathe out. And bring your big toe to touch. Small space between your heels if you're not there already. Swing chair pose. And take an inhale. Bend your knees, scoop your hips down and back. Pause here for a moment before you even reach your arms up. Make sure that your hips are as far back as you can without feeling like you're about to fall backwards. But it's like a cusp where more weight in your heels you can lift up your toes with little to no weight into them. Resting your toes on the mat. Start to reach your arms up, keeping the bend to your knees. And then think, can you engage your core a little bit here? Knit your lower ribs in towards the center of your belly. Take a slow breath in right here. Mm, fold as you breathe out, really starting to maybe feel a little bit more open to the hamstrings now. Take a breath in, lengthen halfway, inhale. Mm, breathe out, step your left foot back. <sighs> Seek your arms to the sky, present lunge. So keep your back heel lifted. You may even want to lift the heel higher than we often maybe do in class. And when you lift your heel this high, can you engage your left goal loose and then find a little bit more stability in this pose, a little bit more work and activation right here. Just breathe in, airplane your arms. Lean your torso forward to the chest, over thigh. And exhale, straighten your right leg. Hands can come down to the earth. You can keep your hands in the airplane if you're digging it. <laughs> Grab some blocks for your hands if this is feeling really tight here today, do not worry. And meet yourself where you're at. Just a note on pyramid for a moment. I personally prefer to keep my back heel lifted here. A little bit more openness in this pose I find. But if you prefer to keep the heel down, look and make sure your feet are on two separate train tracks. There's a nice wide space between both heels, wherever you are. Take an inhale, again, lengthen heart away from navel, get long to the back, and exhale, heart towards navel. 
Two more times, breathe in. Get long. Heart draws away from your abdomen. And as you exhale, think heart towards your belly. Bend your right knee. We'll come back up. Crescent lunge. Inhale. Warrior two. As you breathe out. Now, if you guys stay where you are, I'm just going to turn around. Just so I'm not facing away from you guys. So if you happen to look back up, and I'm on the other side of my mat, that's better. I'm still doing the same side. <laughs> so now worry it too. Our right knee is bent. Our left leg is straight. Left pinky toe edge grounds and stamp down to your right heel. Reach your arms out, right hand forward, left arm reaches back. Take an inhale, reverse triangle, so straighten your right leg. Reach your right hand up and back. And it's triangle pose as you exhale. Right hand's going to reach forwards towards the top of your mat or even beyond. And then bring your right hand down to your right shin. A left hand sweeps to the sky. I'm just breathing here. And notice, have you collapsed in your right side, in your lower side? It's much more just so much more beneficial in this pose if you bring your hand up so you can engage and lengthen that right side than it is to see how far down you can get your hand to go and completely collapse. So we want to keep our core engaged here. Lower ribs is always hugging in towards the midline. Yeah, it does not matter how low your right hand goes, but how much you can spiral your upper body towards the left. Take a slow breath in. And slow breath out. And let's inhale, come up. Warrior two. And exhale, with more both hands down. To frame your right foot. Just gonna jump switch. Pull out your palms. I'm gonna make your way back to a three-legged down dog. So press out your hands, right foot lifts as light as you can. Reach it up and back. Three-legged dog, right leg is still high. Exhale, bend your right knee and open your hip. Pose that I very imaginatively like to call almost royal thing. Come onto the fingertips of your right hand. Right heel towards your left butt cheek. And then spiral your upper body towards the rain. And get a really yummy stretch down the whole of your right side. Maybe by your lats, maybe by your obliques. Just enjoy the stretch. And slowly make your way back. All three legged dog, right legs high in here. Exhale, lower your right foot down. And same to the left side. And stick your left leg up and back, taking it in. And exhale, bend your knee. And come onto your left fingertips. Spiral your upper body towards the left as you. Really try and draw your left heel towards your right glutes. Slow breath in. And exhale, come back, three-legged dog. And lower your left foot down. Look forwards as you inhale, bend your knees, prepare. And exhale, a light little hop to the top of your mat, fall. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fall. Chair pose, breathe in, bend your knees, reach your arms high. Again, find your core, the other arms towards each other, a little tuck on your pelvic ball. Exhale, fall. Straighten your legs, hands to the air. Halfway lift, breathe in. Left, right foot, excuse me, steps back as you breathe out. And again, crescent lunge, reach your arms in. And exhaling, airplane your arms, belly to thigh. Inhale, straighten your left leg. And once more, it's your choice. Keep your hands in airplane. Grab two blocks or hands to the air. What feels good for you today? 
Now you're playing with your balance, in which case the airplane is probably going to be your friend. Maybe you want a bit of extra support if you're feeling tight to the backs of your legs. Grab the blocks. If you want to capture this idea of feeling grounded, maybe you're just folding over your left leg, fingertips to the earth. Just breathe in, lengthen chest away from belly. And exhale, round and fold, chest towards belly. One or two more times, moving with the breath, breathe in, lengthen. Fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen. Bend your left knee. Crescent lunge. Inhale, sweep your arms high. Hmm, warrior two. As you breathe out. Again, anchor down the left heel. The heel of the bent knee. Can you also anchor down the outer edge of your right foot, your straight legged foot? Notice if you don't do this, we tend to collapse inwards. That thigh bone tends to roll inwards, the hips tend to close. And you instead spiral the thigh bone out. This external rotation. So inhale, straighten your left leg. Reach your left fingertips forwards. And exhale, triangle. Left hand down to left shin. Right hand to the sky. And again, it's your choice. How? Where does it feel that like you can still breathe, that like you can still get sensation, and where you're not collapsing into that left side? Find that space where you can still feel the stretch of the pose, but it's not a struggle <laughs> to breathe. Where you can feel, but you can still be present. And where can you lighten here? Is it through your right fingertips? Is it through the crown of your head? Where can you feel grounded? Is it through the feet? Maybe even the tailbone. Well, let's come up this time to star. And turn your left toes in until your feet are parallel, so all of your toes point in the same direction to the side of your mat. And then stand the toes in a little bit. We often tend to say this as yoga teachers because we want the outer edges of the feet to be parallel. But what happens is we tend to, as practitioners, when we can just see our body from our angle, that we think our feet are parallel like this. And our toes are still slightly turned out. So when we think toes in relative to heels, generally means that the outer edges of our feet are just parallel. But I'm not actually pigeon toe. <laughs> and sweep your arms to the sky for a moment. Breathe in. Hands to your heart, to your hips, excuse me, as you exhale. Repairing your Prasarita Padottanasana. Lift your chest, inhale. And forward over wide legs as you breathe out. Adjust your stance if you need, if your feet need to be wider or closer. For a moment, lengthen heart away from navel, inhale. And exhale, forward. And if your hands aren't comfortable on the earth, just grab blocks. And they're such a great prop just to help us find this kind of depth in this pose. Everybody's depth is different. So meet yourself where you are at today. It might be different from yesterday. Maybe different tomorrow. I'll slowly come back to your fingertips. Lift chest away from navel. Like a halfway lift. Let's get that and then side to side. Turn your right toes a little bit towards the corner of the mat. And bend into your right knee. Let's get that to the back of the mat. Straighten your left leg. Turn your left toes towards the ceiling. And dropping your hips 
but keeping your right heel grounded. The second you start to notice your right heel is lifting, lift your hips a little higher. Can you keep your spine tall? And then can you keep your hips low as we cross to the other side? Now your left knee is bent, your right toes are pointing up. <laughs> can you take an inhale here? Now exhale, press the reader, coming back to the middle. Bring your hands to your waist. And slowly come all the way up. We're still facing the side, but maybe shorten your stance. We're going to move towards goddess pose. <laughs> so let's turn your heels in, your toes out. And then we definitely want our feet to be angled outwards. Hands stay at your hips for a moment and bend into your knees. I want you to think about tucking under your tailbone, so scooping your pelvic bowl under. You can use your hands to almost like feel this, check in with us. We want our knees to be pointing out to the sides. We don't want them collapsing inwards. So if you need to come up a little bit higher to make sure you can still see your big toes, then go for it. So a lot on the outer hips. Bring your hands to your heart. And sit up tall through the spine. Again, check in. Scooping your tailbone under. Core engage, lower ribs in towards the midline. Can we breathe here? Don't know about you, but this is always one of the more powerful poses for me. So can we find our breath? Let's bring a bit of movement every inhale, you're going to straighten your legs. Every exhale, bend your knees, move it squatting a little bit lower. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, drop. One more time. Maybe this time you're doing this with arms up wide like a T. Inhale. Exhale. Gonna breathe in. Straight on your legs and pivot to warrior two at the front. So left toes will pivot forwards, right toes will need to come in about 45 or flush with the short edge of your yoga mat. <laughs> Bend into your left knee. So you can inhale, reverse warrior, reach your left hand up and back. <laughs> Exhaling to wiggle both hands all the way down to frame your left foot. Plant your palms, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog, left foot meets your ring. Take a breath and look forwards, and bend your knees. And this time, hop in our way to Steve. <sighs> I'm gonna start up for double pigeon or square pose. Seeing what feels good for you. Start like turning around. Hmm. So, on this pose, there's so many different variations. It's all about finding something that feels really good for your body. There's no better or worse. It's just all about what's right for you. So, we have a few different options. <laughs> like I said, and it's going to be a really nice forward fold. It's also going to be so great for the hips. So, option number one. You can just sit cross-legged and then wiggle your feet wider away from each other until your feet end up underneath your knees. So right foot underneath your left knee, left foot underneath your right knee. And then from there, you're just going to pause and wait <laughs> while I show the other different variations. So in this phase, we will start to fold forwards and the other two, I'll see how you feel. So this is square pose and fire log, Agni Shambhasana on double pigeon. That's where we stack your right shin on top of your left. And you can see, you'll probably feel straight away. And this is a lot more of a stretch. Definitely all about the outer hips. So if you feel like you're kind of, i turn around and show you. Eventually, your knee is, your top knee is going to start, start drawing down towards your top, the bottom third. 
well this might not happen for some of us, like not today, sometimes not ever, because hey, our elder hips get super tight, especially when we ever sit down for a job, hey, like if you're working in an office, you're going to really feel other newspapers. So if you feel like you're sitting here like this, and take your ego out of it, and find square pose, so again, shins parallel, one in front of the other. Wherever you are, whether your shins are stacked or squared, we're going to bring our hands by our hips. Take a little road trip on my mat. <laughs> so hands by your hips. I want you to lift up your hips and then tilt your tailbone back. Try not to stick in your butt out. And drop down. And then from here, you may find that hands by your hips or hands by your knees is giving you a hell of a lot of sensation. In which case, breathing wherever you are. You can walk your hands forwards as long as, again, you can be here and breathe easily. Because when we tend to struggle in a pose, you know, your breath is like, ah, <laughs> you're like white knuckle gripping the mat, right? You don't feel calm, you don't feel grounded. And then what happens when we're stressed in a pose? Our, our muscles actually contract, they tense up instead of relaxing. So we'll just struggle in a pose even more. Also instead, if it's feeling super intense, and so at all. All need for is just a little. And find a space where you can breathe. And the more you can relax in the pose. And slowly, over time, whether that is breaths or days or weeks, you will define a little bit more depth. It's a journey. Don't rush it. And take two more breaths just here. Slowly pat your hands back in. Mm -hmm. Release your legs. Oh, <laughs> shake out a windscreen wiper. Your legs if you need. And then we'll go to the other side. So this time, either you're going to cross your legs with your right foot in first and your left foot, your left leg in front. So, or whatever side you didn't cross your legs on the other side. So, for example, if you crossed your legs the first time with your right foot in front, so I'm going to do it with your left foot in front, or vice versa. And if you are moving into Agni Shavasana, into double pigeon, fire pose, then it's our left shin that we're crossing on top, stacking on top of our right. And just so we all get the idea of what a journey is and to be okay with where we are at, my left hip, my left knee, I've always had issues with my left side, so um, yeah, left knee. So when I first started moving into fire log, I would literally be sitting like this. And it was just so uncomfortable on my left side. I would just, yeah, I'd hate this pose. <laughs> and over time, and by time, I definitely mean years and years and years, and I'm at a point where I'm pretty stacked evenly. My left hip is tighter but it's not so dramatically tighter. And we I did get to this point by fighting with my body, by saying, yeah, I will get more flexible, I will force myself into deep into the pose. And you just gotta sit and breathe. And take your time. Be gentle with your body. It's a, it's a lesson, it's a journey. <laughs> and I say this now, but I know that for me, as with everybody else, there's always moments of struggle where you're just frustrated with what you want to be able to do and what you can currently do. But we'll never be able to get to where we want to go if we're being critical of where we are right now. That's definitely something I've learned. 
Bring your hands by your hips again. Lift your hips. Tuck your tailbone back. And then fold again. You can be seated upright. And tilt forwards. Hands and come forwards, whatever feels good. And just be where you are. And let yourself be where you are. Sure, your breath is relaxed, and your shoulders are relaxed. Backing out or deepening in, whatever you need. And to come back up. And release your legs, help for the you need. <laughs> oh, straight in the mat in front of you. Shake up your knees, roll out your ankles, windscreen wiper. Yeah, whatever you need. And then we're going to finish with a choice. You can practice a seated meditation or you can lie down for a more traditional shavasana. There's no right or wrong, so just decide what serves you the most right now. And do just that. <laughs> so either you can lie all the way down on your back, grab any pillows or blankets or anything you need. Or if you want to lie in seat or pose, go for it. If you want to sit, then kneeling, cross-legged, whatever feels good for you. Or sit on a sofa. <laughs> Ah, it's tempting. <laughs> if you're not comfortable on the floor, then yeah, just make sure you can get yourself comfortable. And when you've found your way to a comfortable resting place, I'm going to take three clearing breaths. And these breaths are where we take a slow breath in through the nose. And as we exhale, we sigh out, so audibly through the mouth, like <sighs> letting it all go. And I want you to literally let go of anything that's holding you back with every exhale. So letting go of any stagnant energy, of any kind of mental cluster, any thoughts that are holding you back. Anything that isn't serving you in any capacity, physical tension, whatever it might be. Make you really <sighs> let it go through breath out. Also, spy in a comfortable space, close down your eyes again. Let's take a slow, steady breath in through the nose. And exhale, sigh. Again, breathe in through the nose. Exhale, sigh. Last time, slower inhale. Sigh, exhale. Let it go. So your lips. And your breath just pass in and out through the nose. Feel the warmth of your breaths out. And the way your body expands as you breathe in. And wherever you are, seated lying or on the sofa, Drop your attention into your body. 
and have this idea of attention dropping down. And as you do this, leave the thoughts, deepen your attention away from your mind, further down, deeper into your higher self. Let the breath ground you. And your body relax. 